original investigators believe he murdered her. They yeah. just can't prove it. It's my first initial call to the private investigator working on my dad's case. My wife jumps up from the table and says, Oh my God, who is this man coming in the backyard? I divorced him because I couldn't trust him at all. He lied to me at the very beginning. He was living two separate lives. In the water about 30 yards away, and identified it as it was a person. So before we start episode three here, I just need to go back and clarify something in episode two. I had put little reminders up to kind of remind the audience of who we were talking about. And in that, I had put that two of Bree's siblings were half siblings, and they're actually step siblings. So she has a stepbrother and a stepsister who were Carolyn's kids coming into the marriage. And then she has a brother by blood who is Chris's son. So I just wanted to correct that, and moving forward, I'll call them by their correct family name, meaning stepbrother or stepsister instead of half. Now, on with the episode. Um, you got my email about the stepsister, right? Yeah, yeah, I got that. That's amazing. So what are they, is it coming via mail? Yeah, it should be here. It said seven to ten business days, and they haven't emailed me telling me I couldn't have it yet, so I think things will that, so. It's it's probably nothing. We're probably gonna get it and it's gonna be like she passed away on this date and that's it. Like it's probably not anything because it might just be one more little point throughout. Uh -huh. If you do get it, let me know. Okay. I'm really curious about the, the situation to which how Danielle left. Yeah. Because it seems like there's a lot of questions about whether this was organized, agreed upon, or you guys went on a trip and came back and she was just gone one time? They were at my parents' cabin. So did my parents know when they went up to the cabin? That's a good question, if she mm. was leaving. I th I'm pretty sure they knew that we were going up there. there. Yeah. yeah, but did they know you were going up there so Danielle could get leave. out? Yeah, I don't know. And did your dad know? I'm pretty sure he knew because he probably took us up there so that we wouldn't have to like watch her leave. When working on these cases, as you've seen, I really like to talk to everyone who is involved or might have information, even if they're not sure their information's pertinent. A lot of times hearing stuff, I'm able to connect dots that I might not have been able to without that information. But another thing I do is often go into the past. And why I do that is because often I start to see a pattern of behavior emerge. And when I see a pattern start to emerge, it helps me understand what might have happened in the present or what might happen in the future. I really believe that the past is a great indicator of the future. So that's why I find it so important to kind of go back and find out what happened in past relationships, especially in this case, because I think those past relationships will tell us a lot about what might have happened to Carolyn. And one thing that's really sad in this case is Cindy, Chris's first wife, had passed away from a drug overdose, so we couldn't talk to her. So I think one of our next big people we wanted to talk to was Danielle, his second wife. All right, what do we got? Okay, so I found her Facebook. My dad's ex-wife, Danielle. I want to contact her. Do you remember when she came into your life at all? Hey, surprise, here's your new stepmom. Right? Like, he told us about her and then brought us up to Connecticut, and we lived there for like a month. And then we moved to Colorado Springs, like, all together. So explain to me, in your recollection, since you were very young, explain to me your dad's marriages. Who was he married to first? What happened? What, who was he married to second? What happened? And what, who was married third? And what happened? So first he was married to my mom, my biological mom. I know that they were like high school sweethearts. Cindy. This is Cindy on Christmas morning. Rubbing her eyes and hiding. They just kind of jumped into everything a little too fast and 
weren't right for each other, lots of abuse on both sides. And then I know my mom got out of it and they just shared custody. My dad was in the Coast Guard. He barely came and saw us. So he split up with your biological mom and then he went on to this woman. Danielle. They met in Connecticut somehow. I'm not sure the story of how they met, how long they were together before they decided to get married. Mm -hmm. They were already married when I had met her. Oh, wow. So you never even met her before they were married? No. She moved to Colorado for a period of time? Yeah. And I'm not sure why she left or what their reasoning was, but I really want to find out. And how long would you say they were married for in your best guesstimation? I want to say about a year, about maybe a less. Year. Okay. And how long after she left did he end up with Carolyn? I want to say it's probably about a year and a half to two years between there. Okay. They met through Jenny and I. Jenny and I were friends in uh, third grade. Oh. And we wanted to hang out on the weekend and Carolyn brought Jenny to my dad's house and it was basically like love at first sight. <laughs> we can't okay, take guys. out more fatties for Christmas. <laughs> we gotta measure these. When you first met Carolyn, what were you like excited to, to have a uh, mom in the house? I mean, I know you've had a mom, but. I was definitely like really turned off towards her. I'm just like, you're not my real mom. <laughs> <laughs> but So pretty typical. She definitely is probably like the big part of why I am the way I am today. Like she definitely set me straight when I needed so to be set way. straight. Yeah. yeah. Like she was definitely like a good role model in my life. They were married since I was in third grade, so I wanna say that was like nineteen ninety eight. Holy I believe. Shit. So 21 years, 20 years before she passed? Yeah. What are you hoping to, that we find when we look up her, Danielle, the second wife? I want to know like who she is and like what she's doing now. And I want to know that she's happy in her life currently. Do you feel like she dodged a bullet? I feel like she did. Do you think that she'll talk to us? I really hope so. Like I honestly, I don't know. And your friend requested her earlier. I did. And no response on that yet? No, but. That I, can take, I mean, who knows how often. I mean, I know she posted Wednesday, so what, that's two days ago? Yeah. So that's probably a good sign that by the end of the weekend, we'll know if you're gonna be accceptable or not. Yeah, but I do also, while we're waiting for the friend request to come back, I do wanna send her a message. Okay. Cause it might actually help her accept the friend request. Yeah, right. Like she knows my last name, it used to be hers. Right. She's gonna see that. Right, she's not an idiot. That's a significant point, like for her just to not remember your names or, yeah. you know, I feel like she might not, you, you might be able to pass her on the street and she might not recognize you, but like I think she'd see your name and be able to connect that. Do you think if she does talk to us that she's gonna say anything about the breakup? I feel like we should kind of explain to her why I'm asking these questions. All right, well, let's, let's, do this. let's send her a message. I don't know if you remember me. I know this might seem strange. I was wondering if you might have some time to talk to me. Don't mind the typos. <laughs> I wouldn't know if you were spelling incorrectly anyway, so you're good. <laughs> <laughs> I want to say something else that might make her a little bit more interested in responding. Okay. I'm Chris Blinkenfeld's daughter, and I remember you being in my life briefly when I was a kid. Oh, that's good. She probably cared for you guys, even if it wasn't something she could stay in. Yeah, I'm sure she like loved you guys and just had to go. But still, like even with this, what I have right now, it still isn't like it wouldn't grab me. <gasps> Whoa! Oh my god! Oh, she knows. I'm, I'm gonna delete that okay. part. I know this might seem strange. I was wondering if you have some time to talk to me. So she's like, "Hi, how are you? It's been forever." Wow! Exclamation point! Though she's excited, right? Well, because I'm sure this was. Can you imagine if, okay, so you guys haven't talked, and as far as you know, your dad hasn't spoken to her no. since then. No contact with my dad. So that's like, so this just came out of left fielder, so I'm sure she's like, what is this all about? 
So while I was going back through the home videos to find the clips of the three women Chris had been married to, I had also found this little clip and I thought I'd share it. Please understand that this case is extremely personal to me, so when I find little things like this, I just want to be able to share them with you guys. This is a clip of Brie and I when we were much, much younger. Oh, my God. Oh, God. Oh, God. She slept. What do we do? Oh, God, she got me dropped over. I just wanted to remind everyone to subscribe if you can. We don't actually make any money on this show. Any money that is paid through with subscriptions just goes back into making the show. So we really, really, really appreciate your support. If you do subscribe, you get to see episodes early, you get discounts on merchandise, and you get to see some of the behind the scenes uncut footage. Another cool thing we do is we have a private Facebook group where we can kind of talk about the cases and I do Q and A's monthly so that I can talk to everybody directly who is a subscriber. So please subscribe if you can. If not, you will still be able to watch the episodes for free on YouTube every other Monday for the Bonsai case and every other Friday for the Carolyn Blankenfeld case. Hello. Hey. <laughs> How are you feeling? Uh, I'm like really nervous, even though I like know what it's going to say, but I mean, there might be a surprise on there. Yeah, I kind of wonder, is this just going to be as simple as saying that she's passed away, or is it going to be something where there's anything, other details or anything? Yeah. Do you want me to scan it to you and we can read it together, or do you just want me to read it to you? Can you send me like an email with it? Yeah. Okay. Let me uh, grab my laptop. Hold on. I'll be right back. All right, so I've got the document here. I didn't read anything. I just opened it, so it's open can here. You see the, can you see the whole entire thing? Yep, I think so. Yeah. Okay, it's like a really long piece of paper, so I had to scan it, scan it twice. Oh, okay, I see. I see the bottom. All right. Ready? Yep. Okay, so it says her name, date of death found on May 7th, 2018, in place of death, Perdita Bay. Location of death, Pensacola, which makes sense. It has, like, her address and her job. Okay, so that's where her and Chris live together? Yeah. Okay. And the, that's her job? I thought she was retired. Uh, that was her job before she retired. I'm assuming they just put it on there. Oh, okay, okay, that makes sense. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. And then it has spouse, which is my dad, and then it has her father and mother's name. Uh, they're both deceased. And then it shows, like, the funeral stuff. The, that's not the right place where her funeral was. Is it just, like, where she was cremated? Did huh. they do that? Uh, it says probably in place of disposition information. So maybe that's what disposition means. I don't know for sure what that means. Okay. Yeah, because her funeral was at a place called Mac Funeral Home, and it was in Robertsdale, Alabama. Okay, so yeah, so I wonder if it's just because that the the place that's listed says crematory, so maybe that's where they took her after. Okay, and then it has like the medical examiner. It says time of death eight forty five. Wow, that's weird. But if you look down at the very bottom, it says time of injury fifteen hundred on May six two thousand eighteen. Ah, so that's actually interesting because I think that helps us clarify that another thing that says she went into the water at three o'clock. Yeah. Um, so man, that's probably when they, death, yeah. when they found her was 845 probably, right? They found her the next morning at 845. And it just says it was an accident and it was drowning. Immersion in salt water at the very bottom too. Okay. I just trying to picture what it would be like to like look at my mom's death certificate this way. I mean, how does this? Do you have any feelings about this, or you just kind of tuned off to the whole thing? Or I wish it described more. Like yeah. I, I wish it said something else. But I mean, it is what it is. Honestly, I don't know. Just something that's more telling rather than just what we kind of expected. Because to me, it kind of shows exactly what we expected it to say. Yeah. Is this the one who does like a whole autopsy or if they suspect uh, someone drowned back? I wonder if they do an autopsy or if there's an autopsy report anywhere. I wonder 
that too. I mean, it does have the name of the medical examiner. It might be worth us calling them. Well, and you'll probably get further because of the fact that you're related to her. But you wonder if it's worth calling just to see, because maybe this is all there is and that's good. Then we know that we can move on. I think this is a good, a great first step. I think that might be a good idea to see if you can talk to this Andrea Noel Minyard. I mean, I would try to reach out to her either way just to see if, well, I'd first just ask if this is the only thing we can see. If this is it, we'll just keep moving forward with the rest of the stuff. Okay, there you go. <laughs> Apparently not. Are you, are you Can sure? you still see me, Bray? Yeah. <laughs> I think it's a drag down. Isn't that, isn't that part of drag down? Don't you drag down from the top? Oh, there we go. Do you know how to use you your phone? Yeah, how to I'm 40, Bray. Give me some, cut me some slack. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so what were you thinking? What were you thinking of asking the investigator? Well, initially I was just going to tell him who I was and why I was calling. And I was going to kind of ask you if you had any questions that you felt like I should ask. Um, or if I should just kind of go over with him what I know and see if he would give me information about what he knows. Yeah, I kind of think, I think that's a good place to start. To, like a lot of times what I try to do with people is like at least open a door so that they're comfortable with me calling them back. So if as I need more information or things go on or even that we can share information with them. I think it's a good start just to kind of touch base and let them know your thoughts. I feel like if we get just some preliminary information and see what he's willing to share with us, and it sounded like from what you said that he was going to share whatever with us, we probably have everything that that medical examiner was doing there. But like that's, does he have anything else? Does he have photos? of her body? Does he see bruising? That's probably a good thing maybe to just sh show up like a grieving daughter, which you are, so, and to ask questions that way. And then depending on how he reacts to talking to you, we should maybe play that as long as we can because we don't, we need his information. We don't need him. Yeah, so I think that's a good start. But when you're done talking to him, do you mind giving me a call back? I sure will. Okay, awesome. Okay, so you're gonna call him now? Yeah. All right. Good luck, hon. Bye. All right. Bye. Hello. Hey. Um, it went really. It went good. Uh, yeah. Well, what did he say? I think that's neat because I feel like if we kind of keep him just feeding us as much as he has and we can obviously feed him anything we have. But yeah, I guess I should be talking to him again Friday, so I will call you again after that. I will talk to you, I guess, soon. Okay. All right. Bye, hun. Bye. Okay, so I found a recent article about the medical examiner. And it says that she was receiving income somewhere that was not within her salary. That she had 12 inadequate autopsy reports in the past five years. which my mom could be one that they haven't discovered yet. Mm -hmm. And also she's resigning suddenly in September. Yeah. Because I was going to call her 
And then I found that information and I said, I'm not calling her anymore. So that <laughs> leads one to believe that she was being bribed to change autopsy reports. Like, that's what I would think. What should I say? Let's see. I know it might seem strange. I was wondering if you might have some time to talk to me. I remember you being in my life briefly when I was a kid. I feel like she's going to talk to you. So I, I feel like it almost isn't going to matter. I'm, like, shaking. I know, right? That's <laughs> I'm crazy. I'm so excited and, like, nervous at the same time. Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to send that part. Yeah. Okay, so she read it. Okay. You can see that little yep. blurb. She's probably stalking my profile. Right? I'm sure she's like, what could this possibly be about, you know? <laughs> it's like, do, 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 do. <laughs> Can't you see if they're typing? Doesn't little bubbles come up or something? Oh, bubbles! Oh! <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. This is good, because we haven't really given any information. I remember, like, when she left, I had, we never heard from her again. Wow, not even anything. Like, no, well, Sheldon and I didn't. I don't know about my dad. Right. If, they did talk, I didn't know about it. What's crazy is like, what the hell happened that it was like needed to be that kind of a break? And I know she wasn't in your life for long, so it wasn't like she spent 10 years there and then disappeared. I'm curious, I really wonder how long the timeline was. I really wonder how long you guys were in the same house as her. Oh. Uh, yes, I would love to chat with you. Are you okay? I was married to your dad for a short time and during the time he took custody of you and Sheldon, your mom was going through a rough time. How long were you married to my dad? How long did you guys know each other? Yeah, maybe. Should I start braiding her with questions, or should yeah, yeah. I just be like, "Hey, if you don't mind, I'm I'm just trying to piece together some of my past. Do you mind telling me how long you guys were together, approximately? How long you lived in Colorado?" I'm trying to piece together some of my past because of some things that are going on currently. And why did you leave? No. Yeah. Oh, is that a lot? Like, and why did it come to an end? My heart tracing. I know. It's kind of crazy. I mean, it's is Yeah. And I mean, I don't, it obviously doesn't appear she knows what's happened. I don't think she realizes Carolyn's past. Why would she, though? I mean, I'm, I do want to explain that to her eventually, though. Yeah. Because I think we'll know if this person is worth pursuing further. In this aspect, obviously, it might be someone you keep in touch with. But I think it'll, if she's like, oh, no, we're just too young and it, we, we move too fast, you know, and then we'll be like, okay. But if she pauses or hesitates on any of that, I think we'll know. Wow, that was a long time ago. I met him while he was working in CT and still in the Coast Guard. I think it was 93 when we met Whoa. and married in 1994. Oh, wow. So Whoa. they must have been married for a while before I even met her. Whoa. That now, how old is were you some in, new news. How old were you in 93? Three years old. We lived in Stratford for a little bit. That's in Connecticut, right? I think so. I'm almost positive. And he did a lot of traveling for his job, health and safety officer, which he still does now um, at Austell. Then we moved to Colorado Springs to take custody of you kids. I moved back to CT and divorced him. He did tell me that I would be able to keep in t contact with you kids. I gave you guys a book of stamps and fun writing paper. After the papers were signed, he said I couldn't stay in touch with you. I never heard from him again. Whoa. So ask... Ask what year she moved back, because that's going to be really telling here. What year did you move back to Connecticut after the divorce? The divorce. Honestly, I don't think I even met her until like 97, just to be honest. Whoa. Because I remember. Because I didn't think they were, I thought it was like a year. I think I was in second grade when we lived with her. So you were eight. And what, 93, you said you were three? Yeah. I was born in 1990, so. Whoa. I didn't even know they were married that long. Is that she said they were they got married they got married ninety four? So when did she say they moved to Colorado Springs? What year did you move to Colorado Springs to take custody of Sheldon and I? A whole part of my life I never even like knew. That's crazy. Right there. Yeah, I mean he like he really like He's uh, I, he really was not around at all. I mean in my memory as a kid, like I don't remember him in your life. Like he was there a little bit when you guys were babies, and then that was it. But when you were a baby, I feel like he left pretty, that was it. Like Sheldon got a couple years with him, and then you got nothing. She says, it was a long time ago. 
I do remember that shortly after I moved out, he moved you guys in with your, in with a mom from your school. So that would be oh, Carolyn, right? Okay, yeah. I'm pretty sure she had a few kids of her own and she worked at a bank. Yep, that's Carolyn. Carolyn worked at a oh, bank when my dad one. met her. Okay. So shortly after, I know he did not meet Carolyn while he was with Danielle, though. Okay. I know that. Oh, okay, so 96, 97. So that makes sense why that's, it's just crazy that you didn't even know he was married to her. Okay, so should I get with the heavy stuff? That woman has been my stepmom since 1999. Unfortunately, last year she died in a tragic boat accident under mysterious circumstances involving my dad. Also involving my dad. Yeah. Also involving my dad. Don't ask her any questions after that. Leave it for a second. I just want to see what her authentic thing is. This is crazy. <laughs> so, good response. All right, all right, all right. Read she it. She says. What is it that you think I could help you with? I divorced him because I couldn't trust him at all. He lied to me at the very beginning. He was living two separate lives. One with me working for the EPA and gone for 21 days. And the second was him in the Coast Guard and living in New Jersey. The truth was the second. I was young and dumb back then. I found out about the double lives because I picked up or dropped off our taxes to the account. I opened the envelope and saw who he really was. He told me he lied to me because he was embarrassed. About what? Along with being lied to, did you ever feel unsafe? Yeah, that, perfect. Yeah, or physically in danger, something like that, yeah. So, I mean, the timeline of my dad's relationships, they're all very, like, close together. He got married pretty immediately after him and Danielle got a divorce, and then he got engaged not too long after Carolyn died. Yeah. Is he afraid to be alone? Obviously, but yeah. He's never alone. He's literally, no I mean, look at this pattern.